Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the University of Bridgeport for Coach Bruce Webster and Gordon at Harvard Law Division Basic for tonight's NCAA Division II East Coast Conference Women's Basketball Game, featuring the Spartans of St. Thomas Aquinas College from Acosta Heights in Spartan, New York, and your host, Purple Knights, from the University of Bridgeport. Before we get our starting lineup, we ask you to please rise and move off the caps as we honor America with the flag of our national anthem. Welcome to this ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball. I'm Isaiah Rhodes, and for today's matchup, we have the University of Bridgeport Purple Knights on the women's side versus St. Thomas Aquinas Spartans. The Purple Knights come in with a record of 5-21 and with 3-11 and record in the ECC play. They're coming off of a hard off of a tough loss against Malloy in which unfortunately they weren't quite able to get things going very early and it was a snowball effect after that. They lost 65 to 41. Uh, Khadija Dixon, the former Purple Knight herself, uh, got a triple double, 10 points, 10 assists, 11 rebounds. Samira Henderson led the Purple Knights with nine points and eight rebounds, but unfortunately for the Knights, they just weren't able to get things going from a shooting perspective, they shot 27% and only scored 13 points in the first half. For St. Thomas Aquinas, even though they're nine, 19 and six with an 11 and three record in ECC play, they're coming over a tough stretch of what they've lost three of their last floor, three of their last four games, including a heartbreaking loss to New York Tech, 62 to 58. Uh, Meg Nomeyer, uh, completely lit them up for 22 points, 13 rebounds, and six steals. Although Stack tried to get back into the game late, it was but so much they can do. Uh, they trailed at the, at the half. They got it as close as three um, with seven minutes to play. But Zoe, Zoe Amelborch, three, opened the lead back up to 12 uh, after, uh, after Stack went three minutes without scoring. And that, that particular stretch really did them in. So for, for this game, obviously I mentioned Stag being 19 and six so far overall. The official regional rankings have just come out and Stack is seventh. So if we go into postseason play, you want to try to uh, round things into shape for UB, despite their tough record right now. They have been in multiple games. They, they fought valiantly. It's just, as I said, sometimes the shooting is not quite there for them. So if they're able to, you know, try to Finish off this season in, a, in a, a positive light. You have a couple of home games left. You want to set the tone going into the next season, try to build on the potential that we see this year. I mentioned some Myra Henderson, this being her first year with UB and a number of players uh, being their first year under head coach Janie Mitchell in her second season. You want to utilize this, uh, this tough stretch right here as a building block for the future. So we're going to get the starting five to you very soon. Right, right now, um, Samira Henderson coming in at number two, uh, Janice Loney number four, uh, Grayson Kerr number eleven, uh, Judith Valdez Delaval number twenty-three, and Jaquela Holloman number thirty-two for UB. For St. Thomas Aquinas number zero, Sa Sarah Serbak, Melissa Sandler, Zaria Thomas, Ruth Adams, and Emily Preston are the starting five for St. Thomas Aquinas. Head coaches for both sides, Kim Lusk for St. Thomas Aquinas and head coach Janie Mitchell for the University of Bridgeport. 
And Stack wins the tip. Janice Loney guarding uh, Savage and back at the top of the key. They work it around the perimeter. Zaria Thomas able to get the ball right wing. Three point shot is good. Zaria Thomas knocks in her first three of this of the game. Bridgeport trailing three to nothing so far on the season. This is a stack team that shoots 35% from three. Samara Henderson at the top of the key looking for Holloman. Holloman. Mid-range jumper is good. So it's always good to see Ja'Kayla Holloman uh, get into a groove offensively. She's a player for Bridgeport who provides great balance, tough defense, but also has a well-rounded game, especially from the mid-range. Samara Henderson with the rebound. I mentioned uh, against Malloy, Henderson had nine points but eight rebounds. She's another all-around player for Bridgeport, not only as a scorer, but as a facilitator as well. So you want to see the ball in her hands as much as possible. Janice Loney looking to drive, pull up, turn around, jumper, no good. Bowles Delaval tried to get that rebound, but she steps on the end line. No, they say uh, it'll stay with Bridgeport four on the shot clock. So they reset the shot clock to 30, saying uh, Stack retained, Stack had full possession there for that uh, rebound. So Bridgeport Lux up there. Bowles Delaval gets the inbound from Grayson Kerr. Kerr trying to attack at the paint off the glass. The basket is good. Bridgeport up four to three. Serve back with the basketball. Gets to that right corner, jab step on Kerr. Great defense for Kerr. Inside looking for Emily Preston and it will go out of bounds. Solid defense from Delaval there. Kerr crosses that timeline, gets it to Holloman. Holloman back to Loney. Goes to Kerr. Henderson looking for a screen from Loney. Trying to get into the paint. 13 o'clock pulls up for the jumper, no good. Stack comes away with the rebound. On the year, averaging 71 points per game, shooting 44% from the field. In their previous game against New York Tech, shooting just 36% from the floor. And that's what really did them in in terms of trying to get in, back into the game in the latter part. And another three-point shot is good for Zaria Thomas. So two three-point shots for Thomas. She has all the baskets for the bit for uh, the Spartans. Kerr kicks it to Henderson. Henderson for three. J too long there from that right corner. Thomas thought about a three. Might have traveled there. No call. Preston comes away with the rebound. Back to Thomas. Up fake drives. Good defense there from Loney. Janice Loney in her first year with Bridgeport, uh, is another tough player. Gives maximum effort so far on the season. Loney, this is her 21st game starting. So she, despite being her first year, she's really getting used to uh, Coach Mitchell's system and really just provides great energy, especially from a perimeter perspective. But we got a foul called against Loney there. A little bit too aggressive for Loney. So going to the free throw line will be Ruth Adams. First free throw for Adams is good. Second free throw for Adams, no good. Bridgeport tried to get that rebound. Adams gets her own miss, and she can't quite get that. Tried to save, it was Loney. Loney couldn't quite get to it. Bridgeport trailing seven to four. Tough effort there from Loney, unable to corral that rebound. But the shot clock goes to 16, so that's a, a bit of an advantage there for Bridgeport. 
The jumper no good. Adams comes down with another rebound. But it will be a jump ball, so possession will go to Bridgeport. Good effort there from Bridgeport. Adams on a year shooting 52% from the floor, 76% from the free throw line. So Holloman working at mid post, tries to get into the paint. Off the, the glass, almost blocked by Adams. She gets her own miss, couldn't quite get the uh, reload there. Adams pushing the pace, gets it in the paint for an easy layup for Preston. Preston couldn't quite get to it. Adams fighting, scrappy. Gets it out to Preston, jumper no good. Tamara Henderson comes down with the rebound. Very steady, crosses that timeline. Gets it to Loney. Loney driving baseline. Off the glass, the layup no good on the reverse. Adams pushing the pace off the rebound. Adams at the, at the glass, can't finish the layup. Good defense there from Holloman. So despite the lack of field goals being made right now, the pace of the game is good. It isn't as choppy. You always want to see a good flow, especially early. Kurt takes a play from Coach Mitchell. Gives it to Alizé Davis. Davis coming off the bench today. Big time block there as Kurt couldn't quite get that. Uh, she couldn't quite get that layup. Big block there from uh, Sarah Serbak. Kerr picks up the foul, trying to prevent the fast break. Coming into the game for, coming into the game for stack uh, number one, Alexa Huertas. Huertas, right wing, tries to drive on Loney. They work it around to Serbak. Serbak goes back left off the glass. Layup no good. Preston fighting for that offensive rebound. And a foul against Bridgeport. They call that foul against. That'll go, that'll go, that'll go against Alizé Davis. Huertas catches the inbound. 15 on the clock. Jab step Serbak, trying to get into the paint. Big block there from Judith Valls Delaval. Possession will go to Bridgeport. And it's good to see Delaval uh, engage defensively. A lot of times this season, she, she struggled to try to maintain. I know that Coach Mitchell is usually used to utilizing uh, Kyle Preston at this time, especially defensively. And then you can, you can utilize uh, Stephanie McBride as well. But Valls de Laval uh, standing, standing in very early, showcasing her skills. Bridgeport with possession. Valls de Laval looking for Davis. And a big time post play from Alizé Davis, especially off the ball movement, set up that easy basket. Bridgeport trailing by one, seven to six. Under five minutes to play here in the first. Isaiah Rhodes for the ECC Network. Preston kicks it out. Preston, big time backdoor cut there from Zaria Thomas, but it's uh, deflected out of bounds. They call a foul against Bridgeport. That'll go against Samara Henderson. That's her first personal foul, and that'll be Bridgeport's 15 foul. So now they're in the they're in the penalty. Zaria Thomas heads to the free throw line on the year, shooting 71%. She makes the first. Thomas so far here in this first quarter, seven points. She's knocked down two three-point shots. She hits both. So Bridgeport trailing by three, nine to six, 435 remaining. Here at Harvey Hubble Gym, we're on Boots Webster Court. It's a stack team coming in with a 19 and 6 record, but they're in a bit of a tailspin, losing three of their last four. So they want to try to try to uh, round things back into the shape before postseason play. 
for Bridgeport, especially here at home. You want to try to defend home court despite what your record might say. This is a Bridgeport team that gives maximum effort every time they play, so we should be in for a good, uh, entertaining game. Adams goes inside to Preston. Preston kicks out. Thomas for three, rims out. Balls Delaval with the rebound. Crossover dribble from Henderson, and she's caught up at the rim, but they call a foul. That foul will go against Zaria Thomas. That'll be the first team foul with 3.55 remaining against the Spartans. So good discipline for the, for the Spartans in the first uh, six minutes of play. Can Bridgeport try to get more aggressive? Pull-up jumper from Henderson, no good. Roof Adams comes away from, with the outlet pass towards us. Resets on the left wing, guarded by Grayson Kerr. Preston gets it to Adams. Adams thought about a three. Not necessarily the best three-point shooter. Looking for Preston on a pass. The, shot, the pass is no good. Not as clean as uh, they would like, especially on that roll. It'll be a turnover. Possession goes to Bridgeport. No, I want to correct myself. Adams, Adams shooting 48% from three. Apologies there, 20 for 42. So not many attempts, but when she does shoot them, she catches them in. McBride, top of the key. Stephanie McBride into the game for Bridgeport. Grayson Kerb pulls up for three. No good on the, on the three. Adams comes away with the rebound. Huertas guarded by Henderson. We're under three minutes to play here in the first. Inside, and the layup is no good for uh, Melissa Sadler. Bridgeport able to get the stop. Kerr trying to push. Brought about her with us. Off the glass, layup no good. Looking for the foul was Kerr. No call, possession will go back to the Spartans. Coming into the game for Bridgeport. Denise Loney back into the game for Grayson Kerr. Adams right wing guarded by Davis. Serback for three. Good. So Sarah Serback knocks in her first basket in the third three of the quarter for the Spartans. Davis guarded by Adams. Davis attacking. They're going to call a blocking foul. It's a good, aggressive attack there from Alizé Davis to get Bridgeport fir Bridgeport's first uh, free throws of the game. That personal foul will go against uh, Kelly and Averill, number 25. Davis at the free throw line on the year. Shooting very good so far, 80%. Free throw is good. Davis on the year, averaging just under nine points per game. Um, in her 23 games played, she started 19. So this is one of the rare games where she's come off the bench. But because of her ability to shoot, she's been asked to potentially provide a spark off the bench. She's gotten uh, four points so far. Bridgeport comes away with a steal as Davis tried to set up uh, Vols Delaval there in the post, but the pass went off her hand. Averill can't get the layup. Big defense there from Janice Loney. Despite her diminutive size, providing uh, gr grit and toughness to make that layup very tough. McBride comes down with the rebound. Bridgeport in the Florida offense. Going to McBride. McBride in the post. Florida across the lane. Rims out. That's one of the toilet bowl finishes there that wasn't able to fall. As it went all the way around the rim and then popped out. Bridgeport trailing by two possessions. 12 to 8. Jumper is good for Melissa Sadler. 
Sadler gets her first basket of the game. So we approach one minute remaining here in the first. Inside, ball is Delaval. Kicks back out to Henderson. Henderson with the floater. Can't finish, gets her own miss. Looking for Davis. Davis at the top of the key, thought about a three instead, drives, and can't finish. Going for the offensive rebound, and Adams comes down with it. With 40 seconds to play here in the first. Serback, able to get it to Salah. The jumper, I mean, pardon me, the layup no good. Janice Loney with a two-second difference between shot clock and game clock. It's a 23 seconds left on the shot clock. You got McBride kicks out to Davis. Davis left corner three, no good. Ball Delaval with the layup put back reverse is good. She gets her first basket of the game. Now it is 14 to 10, under 10 seconds left here in the first. Adams on that right wing. Pulls up for three, back rims it. Fighting for that rebound, Samira Henderson comes down with it. And we go into the second. Bridgeport Trail in St. Thomas Aquinas, 14 to 10. We'll be back with much more. I'm Isaiah Rhodes. This is the ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball. Welcome back to this ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball. On the women's side of things, St. Simon's Aquinas leads Bridgeport 14 to 10. We are in the, se the second quarter. Ruth Adams works it into the paint as Sadler has it blocked by Stephanie McBride on the weak side. Samara Henderson looking to push the pace, gets it to Loney, left corner three, no good. Fighting for that rebound is Alizé Davis. She couldn't come away with it. And we got a loose ball foul against Samira Henderson as they both, as Adams and Henderson, uh, both fighting for that rebound. But that goes to show you the effort from Henderson, despite her uh, size and position. She's willing to do everything to get every possession for Bridgeport. And I mentioned just her having her imprint on the game on all facets, whether it be scoring, facilitating, or rebound. That is a sign of where she's, uh, potentially going to be as her career continues to grow. Ruth Adams pulls up for a jumper on the uh, right wing. The basket is good for Adams. Adams coming off of a 12-point performance against uh, New York Tech. Sparring's up 16 to 10 and a travel called against Alizé Davis as she tried to uh, drive. Coming back into the game, Grayson Kerr. back with the basketball, works the right wing. Trying to get into the paint, kicks out to Adams. Adams for three, good. So Ruth Adams knocks in her first three of the game. Adams now with six points, I mentioned on the season, shooting 47% from three. She, she, that's her, only her 43rd attempt so far this season, but when she shoots him, she's very efficient. That's a miss here for Bridgeport. So now Bridgeport has to be careful that this game doesn't get out of hand. It's a three-possession game, 19 to 10, but you don't want uh, Stack getting comfortable offensively. Adams tries to get into the paint, can't finish. Great defense there from McBride, but uh, Bridgeport unable to corral that rebound. 
And for Bridgeport, they've been able to get out and run and get opportunities to shoot. Uh, Loney has had a number of corner threes, Davis as well. But uh, despite it being open, they haven't been able to fall. Serve back, straightaway three, good. And right now, the three-point shot is really opening up for, for the Spartans. It's 22 to 10 now. That's the fifth three-pointer made for the Spartans with 7.55 remaining in the first half. And a turnover as there's miscommunication between Denise Loney and Grayson Kerr. And right now, the Spartans starting to create that separation that coach, head coach Janie Mitchell does not want to see. So we have a full, we have a full timeout. I'll be back with much more. 7.51 remaining in the first half. I'm Isaiah Rhodes for the University of Bridgeport in the ECC uh, Network presentation. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Bridgeport trailing St. Thomas Aquinas 22 to 10, 7.51 remaining in the first half. Right now, Bridgeport uh, reeling from the three-point barrage that the Spartans are putting on so far. Five three-pointers made already. Ruth Adams tried to kick it out to Zaria Thomas at the three-point line, but it's a turnover, so great uh, defensive coverage there from Bridgeport making an adjustment. Or on this side of things, offensively, Bridgeport has to cash in on their opportunities. Ja'Kayla Holliman in the post. Across the lane, the floater is good. So we're back to a 10-point game. Big-time trap there from Alizé Davis and Grayson Kerr, but it, it leads to an open three from Zaria Thomas. She's unable to knock it down, but Spartans able to chase down the offensive rebound and reset. Big rebound there from Kelly and Averill. Thomas able to get it to Preston. Emily Preston off the glasses. Layup is no good. Good contest there from McBride. But Ruth Adams there for the offensive rebound and finish. And Ruth Adams close to double digits already here in the first half. She has eight points. Bridgeport being doubled up right now, 24 to 12. Alizé Davis guarded by Adams. In the post to McBride. McBride tried to set up a pass for Ja'Kayla Holloman, but it's stolen. I think for McBride, she got caught up in between a shot and a pass there. She was able to try to get an attempt inside to Holloman, but it's stolen. So, Avril on that left wing guarded by Holloman. Jab step back to Adams at the top of the key. Preston trying to drive on McBride. McBride defensively has been there to make shots very, very difficult. Unfortunately for Bridgeport, they haven't been able to corral the rebound. Three on the shot clock. Basket is no good for Serbak on that layup. Good contest there from Loney. Bridgeport pushing. Grayson Kerr sets up for Davis. Davis on that left wing. Inside to McBride, but it's deflected out from Preston. Coming into the game for the Spartans, number 21, Victoria Caruso, uh, Carisco, and coming back into the game is Alexa Huretas. Alize Davis, back to Loney. Loney has to attack. Ten on the shot clock, kicks out the curtain, and it's deflected out by Huretas. Coming into the game for Bridgeport, number five, Vienna Knox. She comes in for uh, Stephanie McBride, who provided good minutes for Bridgeport. As Kurt tried to get that inbounded to Holloman, it's deflected. Almost a backcourt violation there. 
three on the shot clock. Holloman has to get the shot up. She's unable to get it to fall as it's an air ball, but she had to hoist it up before the shot clock violation. And we got a foul called against Davis. Got a foul called against Davis as uh, Victoria Carrasco tried to get it across that timeline. So that'll be Bridgeport's second team foul. Yeah, so there was a stoppage just to uh, verify what I said. Alize Davis did commit that foul, but the uh, the scores table had it wrong on the scoreboard. But back in the back in the floor play, big time block there from Tamara Henderson to prevent that shot from April to fall. And we got a jump ball possession. We'll go to Bridgeport. So good effort there from Samira Henderson coming on the weak side to prevent that uh that easy basket from April. Bridgeport trailing 24 to 12. We approach five minutes remaining in the first half here at Harvey Hubble Gym, Bruce Webster Court. Grayson Kerr gets it to Davis. Davis on the left wing takes a screen from Knox. Davis attacking, takes contact, and we have a travel against Davis. So Bridgeport, they're trying to be aggressive. They're trying to get shots. It just hasn't been executed the best right now. Too many turnovers preventing... Uh, preventing them from capitalizing on great defense. Another great defensive possession there. Good closeout from Janice Loney. Henderson being cut off by Zaria Thomas at the top of the key. Gets it to Kerr. Loney takes the screen. Trying to get inside. Layup off the glass is no good. Tough, tough stretch here for Bridgeport offensively. Thomas, right corner three, no good. And we got a loose ball foul against the Spartans. That'll go against uh, Kelly and Avril. That's Avril's second personal foul. First team foul here in the second quarter. Crossover dribble. By Kerr, turnaround jumper is good. Good touch there in the paint over the outstretched arm of, of the Spartan interior. Kerr gets her fourth point of the game. Three for Serbak is good. And that is the great equalizer for the Spartans. Whenever Bridgeport wants to try to generate any momentum or make a run, that three ball has been able to keep Bridgeport at arm's length, now trailing by 13, 27 to 14. And Knox was about to get set up by uh, Henderson, but Henderson called for a travel. Three thirty-seven remaining in the first half. I'm Isaiah Rhodes, this is the ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball. Inside. The layup is no good for uh, Melissa Sadler. Good defense there from Vanna Knox to get that rebound. We approach three minutes remaining. They're working around the perimeter. Loney attacking, contact, and we got a blocking foul. So those drives for Bridgeport have been tough here in the first half, whether it be a charge being called or a travel. It just hasn't been the, the type of uh, results that Coach Mitchell would want. But she's sticking to the script and uh, emphasizing our players to try to get into the paint. That way, when the defense collapses, Bridgeport is able to get those easy three-point opportunities. And Loney, uh, despite uh, some, some calls going against her team, Able to draw a foul here. Uh, she misses that first free throw. Bridgeport on the year shooting 73%. Loney on the season shooting 68%. Uh, she's able to go one out of two. Bridgeport trailing by 12 now. 
serve back with the basketball. Gets it back to Adams. They go to Preston, kick out to Thomas on the left wing. 15 on the shot clock. Serve back inside. Great deflection from Samira Henderson. Kicks out to Adams. Adams straight away three. Good. So Ruth Adams now in double digits. The first player in double digits in the game. 11 points for Ruth Adams. I mentioned Adams uh, averaging just under 14 points per game, 13.8 points per game. She's already knocked down two three-pointers here in the first half. Davis. Calls for the, for the dribble handoff to Loney. Loney going to her left, knocks down the jumper. The South Pole now with uh, three points. So she, that free throw being made might her, get her in the groove. Bridgeport surely needs it right now. It's already a Thomas straightaway three, no good. Henderson tried to chase down that rebound, unable to get to it. Ruth Adams has it deflected out by Loney. I mentioned Loney's effort defensively. On the perimeter, great effort there from Denise Loney. Thomas trying to get it across the paint. The layup no good. And it'll be deflected out by Melissa Sadler. So we're under two minutes to play here in the first half. Bridgeport trailing by 13, 30 to 17. Ruth Adams leads all scores with 11. Zaria Thomas knocked down two three-point shots to get her going in the first quarter. She has eight points. Grayson Kerr trying to set up Davis mid post. She gets to the middle of the paint. Pull up jumper, no good. Good effort there from Drew Deval, Delaval. But they're going to call a jump ball possession to go back to the Spartans. Preston kicks out to Thomas. Now, in that uh, left corner, she got chased off the three-point line, and that, in turn, uh, led to a turnover as Emily Preston tried to do an up fake and drive, but she lifted that pivot foot, so it'll be a turnover. Bridgeport has another opportunity to inch closer. You have 110 remaining. Try to get at least three possessions out of this to where you can get quality shots. Davis, left corner three, no good. But those are the type of shots you want, good Good drive and kick from Grayson Kerr to Alizé Davis. It just didn't fall. Bridgeport this season struggling to knock down the three-point shot on the year, shooting 28% from three. Davis pushing the pace. Kicks it to Kerr. Kerr for three. Right corner, no good. So we got about a six-second differential between shot clock and game clock. 26 seconds left and a half. It's 30 to 17. Spartans lead the Purple Knights. And we have a right corner three from Alexa Huertas that opens up a 16 point lead. 33 to 17. Straight away three at the buzzer, no good for Samara Henderson. And the Purple Knights will go into the half, trail them by 16, 33 to 17. The three-point barrage from St. Thomas Aquinas has completely opened up this game. Bridgeport has played solid defensively. They've been able to make tough shots. They've been, they've been able to make uh, shots extremely tough for the Spartans, especially in the paint. But when the defense breaks down and the Spartans get those three-point opportunities, whether it be on reloads from offensive rebounds or just breakdowns from uh, interior, to the kick out, they just haven't been able to stop the three-point barrage. So let's see if uh, Coach Mitchell and the Purple Knights can make adjustments. We have a 15-minute 15 15 minute intermission. I'll be back with much more. I'm Isaiah Rose. This is the ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball.
Welcome back to this ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball. I'm Isaiah Rhodes, and we have a welcome addition, my boy J.J. Duke, my normal broadcast partner. Uh, we are getting ready for your second half performance. The Spartans lead Bridgeport 33-17. to Spartans have been able to knock down the three-point shot. Eight of their 11 field goals have been from the three-point line, J.J., and right now, despite... Uh, the fast-paced game that would favor Bridgeport and try to get them into some early offense. They just haven't been able to keep up with the Spartans to this juncture of the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, Bridgeport's kind of living by their strengths right now, which is getting the ball in the blocks and scoring. Ten of their 17 points come from within the paint, and they're usually a pretty decent three-point defensive team. However, when you have uh, Sarah Surback with three for three from deep, Zaria Thomas already chucking up seven threes, knocking down two. Ruth Adams, someone that usually you don't expect to shoot that many threes, at least in terms of volume. She'll get up one or two per game, but she's two of three. That's a problem for Jeannie Mitchell's team. And for St. Thomas Aquinas, knowing that they need to play from in front, knowing how important this week is for them, they know they can't finish first. Uh, there's a, still an outside chance, I guess, in terms of tying Damon for first, but making sure that they stay in front, trying to secure that number two seed, knowing that you, you have a buy in to get to D.C. next weekend. Big weekend, and you have to finish the game how you started. Yeah, I think for the Spartans, you mentioned it just in terms of how they're finishing this season. They're, they've entered a rough patch where they've lost three of their last four. So uh, coming up against a team like Bridgeport, who on paper doesn't have the best record, this is an opportunity for them to try to uh, right some wrongs. But for Bridgeport, like you said, they're sticking to their strength, trying to get into the paint, as you can see. Uh, Drew DeVal, DeLaval, unable to get a clean shot up. We have a jump ball possession or uh, will go to the Spartans. But just to finish up that point, for Bridgeport, you got the last week of the season. You want to try to build uh, some momentum and try to establish something built on the potential that you do have. I mean, it's a classic case this time of the year. Who's fighting for jobs for next season? You have to make a statement, especially you're playing at home as well. That's a great press break from Stack, nearly getting a three there for Thomas. But to finish the point, you want to finish the season strong. You're playing on your home floor. You have Mercy coming in on Saturday, a game that you know there's some retribution to be had after losing on the road earlier this season. And it starts on a day like today. How much momentum you can gain from beating a top team? Miles, absolute miles, and for, and for confidence. It's April... Tried to get the pass inside to Adams. Adams unable to get the finish. But it'll be shot clock violation possession will go to the Purple Knights. Grayson Kerr has yet to really get in the groove. She has four points so far, but usually when Bridgeport play, is playing at their best, she's very aggressive. Samara Henderson, right wing three, no good. As Ja'Kayla Holloman tried to get that offensive rebound at all. Go out of bounds, possession will go back to the Spartans. That's a look that you want, though. It's certainly in system for Bridgeport, especially how the way that uh, Kerr is able to pick apart the wing. The one thing that stands out to me, Isaiah, when you look at Kerr's numbers, no assists, one turnover, but Alizé Davis with an uncharacteristic four turnovers. Bridgeport handled the ball well, but they could certainly do a better job in knocking down some of those shots. They only have one assist on seven baskets. Averill with the jumper, no good. Emily Preston with the offensive rebound. Skip pass to Thomas, and they reset with Serbak. Serbak guarded by Henderson. Preston inside to Adams. Adams going against Janice Loney, and the size advantage for Adams works to, works to her benefit as she gets another basket already with 13 points. And that's right on our season average. Player that averages 13.8 points per game, shoots at 52% from the floor, and she's showing why, especially also knocking down a few deeper jump shots, expanding her game and forcing Bridgeport to guard her from the perimeter. Holloman crawls up a dribble, kicks it to Valls de Laval. Henderson, great move, but they call her for the travel there. Yep. She, tr she tried to get in the groove there, but they called her for the travel, so turnover by Bridgeport, and those are the things that you definitely don't want to see, especially when you weren't quite able to get into your offense. Those early turnovers only, uh, only infuriate a coach. Yeah, especially how Bridgeport looking like they're trying to create off the dribble as opposed to 
getting the ball inside against a zone. And, you know, Stack is a team that they're always been tough to break down under Kim Lusk. But you need to move the ball to break down a really good defensive unit. And Lee Preston. Able to get it to uh, Sadler, and Sadler able to draw a foul. That's a smart take there, knowing that there was a little bit of a mismatch there, small size mismatch, but still Averill able to attack the hole here to the near side and getting her a chance to go to the line. Averill has yet to get into the, the scores book yet, but this will be an opportunity. First free throw is good. She gets the shooter's roll here at Harvey Hobart Gym on the road. Second free throw, good. That's another area where Bridgeport wasn't quite able to utilize in the first half to, to their advantage, especially considering the physicality from the Spartans. There were a number of shots where Bridgeport felt they deserved a uh, shot at the free throw line. That's one of those shots from Davis. Has to go down, did really well to beat her defender. Far side, but not able to cash in. That's the reason why this team is shooting below 25% in the game as Athams once again muscling her way inside. Luke Adams is really attacking, especially off that dribble. And Adams, a player of great versatility. You mentioned expanding her game. One thing from Adams you can see, especially off the rebound, she's able to push the pace and get her team into offense without having to go to an outlet pass. Alizé Davis trying to attack, gets a shot off the glass, and the basket is good, and one. Well, certainly what, almost worked for her on the last possession, isolating and attacking this time. It does work. She gets the contact as well, and she'll have a chance to go for the old-fashioned three-point play. This will certainly need production from Davis in a game where the Purple Knights are not to say struggling to get scoring from volume, but struggling to get up one of their players to get off. And maybe perhaps a Zan one here for Davis gets her going. I mean, if you look at Bridgeport over the last couple of, couple of games, especially coming off of a tough loss against Malloy in which they shoot just 27%, uh, they weren't quite able to get into a groove offensively. The outside shooting has been an issue for Bridgeport. And you see a steal here from Davis gets it to Kirk Kerr, unable to get that layup to fall, but that consistent outside shooting has been an issue, and that's something that they'll have to address here in the offseason as it comes up. Yeah, well, the interesting bit about it is Bridgeport, they have a few seniors, but not too, too many on this roster, so yeah, you're going to have to address it, but also some of the players you know, didn't see if, as many shots as they'd like fall this season. Got to work on the continue the process, continue working to see those shots fall next year. Melissa Sadler unable to get a uh, clean shot to fall there. Bridgeport trailing by 20, but now has the basketball trying to uh, generate some momentum here over the next six minutes of the third quarter. Myra Henderson crosses the timeline, works the right wing. Hope Knights could love getting Henderson going. 0 for 5 to start this game. And it's stolen by Emily Preston. Serback, nice and steady. You mentioned her game already knocking down three three-point shots. She gets to the top of the key as they work it around. Sadler takes contact from Stephanie McBride, and she'll be going to the free throw line for McBride. She provided great energy there in the first half. And while Bridgeport did give up a lot of three-point shots in that first half, eight of 15, you see the field goal percentage there in that first half, only 28%. That came from great interior defense, especially from McBride and, and Delaval. They made it very difficult, but a lot of those offensive rebounds and reloads led to three-point shots that hurt Bridgeport. I mean, it's the consummate you know, theme in this sport. Second chance opportunities, you're going to get hurt. If you take care of the job on the defensive glass, more often than not, you're giving yourself a chance to win a game. But... You know, Stack do have some size with their bigs, and as you say, they're just recycling, and once the first from three goes down, then they all seem to follow. Pull-up jumper from Loney, rims in and out, and in again. Janice Loney able to get her fifth point of the game. Alexa Huertas 
with the basketball, guarded by Henderson. Present at the top of the key, drives on McBride again. McBride, great defense inside, and a tough, tough snatch there from Vols Delavar to keep possession for Bridgeport. I think McBride got hands to that as well, so establishing her authority down the blocks. Henderson stuck in that corner, tried to go to McBride, it's stolen. Huertas being pressured by Henderson. And the way back into this game for Bridgeport is to start stringing together stops and scores. And while they got the stop, they didn't get the score, and it leads to a three from Zaria Thomas. Thomas now in double digits with 11. She's the second Spartan in double digits. Henderson trying to get it to Loney. Loney attacking. The South Pole off the glass and good. Janice Loney. Now with seven. Carisco over to Sadler, right wing. Three point shot from Thomas, no good. Spartans come away with the offensive rebound. Off the, the, the reload, the layup there for Thomas is blocked by McBride. Yeah, Isaiah, I'm looking at that there. You have five players in white and purple just staring at the ball, not trying to go up and attack it. And you know, that, as you said, it's one of many things that will drive a coach crazy. Seeing the ball hit the hardwood underneath your own defensive basket does lead to a block from McBride, but still Bridgeport could have had a chance for the easy clear. And it leads to points. Nice jumper by Preston. Emily Preston now gets her first basket of the game. Kerr. Able to get it to Davis on the left wing. Takes the screen from Vienna Knox. Knox not in position to catch that pass from Davis. A very bad pass there. Huertas slows down right wing. On the attack, Carisco gets it to Sadler. Kicks out to Preston. Back to Carisco. Left wing. Carisco drops baseline off the glass, and we got a foul against Davis. That was a good attack there by Carisco, spotting the open space in the floor and uh, generating the foul. And free throws coming here to a team that shoots okay from the line, just below 70%. Preston checking out, but some good minutes in that last shift there. And, you know, that's the difference here, Isaiah, for the stack team, is that they can roll 9 or 10 off the bench. And while you don't have as many Big scoring numbers, he got a lot. It's almost kind of like a la Bridgeport men. He got a lot of six, seven, and eight point production players. Yeah, you mentioned the, the scoring prowess of this team. They have three players in double digits led by Adams. Adams is just under uh, 14 points per game, so they have great balance. And you mentioned just being able to utilize that depth. Even if it's not for scoring prowess, you can use it a lot of players for playmaking opportunities as well. They got another four or five players that average, you know, five to eight points per game. So it's almost kind of like you can rotate a first and a second line in there for Kim Lusk, and she's still going to get production. Davis with three on the shot clock has to get a shot up. She tries to kick it across the curve. I don't think Davis was aware of the shot clock situation there. We got a foul against Grayson Kerr. And that again proves why same Thomas Aquinas hold their opponents to sub 60 points per game. It's because of that hustle and hurrying defense and knowing your space in that 2-3 matchup zone. You know that you're not supposed to cut across. Your job is to hold your spot and then hope that they're your teammates are putting in the exact same work effort to take control of their spots. And that's why that turnover happens. 2.36 remaining in the third. Bridgeport trailing by 25 now, 48 to 23. And Stack, one of the best turnover margins in the nation. They only commit 14 and a half turnovers per game. They force over 22 a contest. And Bridgeport actually, through the first 20 minutes, did really well to keep a handle of the ball, but they've now committed six turnovers here in the quarter. Adams, straightaway jumper, free throw line extended is good. We approach two minutes remaining, Ruth Adams now with 17 points, really just a steady presence for the Spartans. Loney, three, no good. But we got a foul under the rim that'll go against the Spartans. That'll go against uh, 
They're going to get Huertas there for fouling the jump shooter, which is certainly one of the few cardinal sins in the sport of basketball, fouling the jump shooter, especially when you're up by the margin that the Spartans are. If player makes it from the NCAA logo, you accept it, and you move on. Maloney on a year shooting 68% from the free throw line. First free throw is good. And Lo Loney, Lo 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 pardon me, um, Loney's one of those players very similar to Hollum in just the, the perimeter version in terms of just her toughness and, and how she's been able to uh, co commit for Coach Mitchell. So um, although this is a tough situation going into next year, she's going to be a player that's going to be utilized at a high level. One thing I noticed, by the way, is Loney goes three of three. Kind of a little slow to get up after that fall. Looks all right right now, but she was kind of laboring towards the right side. Who at that's guarded by Henderson. Adams just hit a free throw line extended jumper, but she's able to draw a foul. That'll go against Loney. That's going to be free throws coming up as well for St. Thomas Aquinas that are knocking him down at 90% on the evening. The only other game, by the way, going on. There's one other doubleheader today. It's UDC hosting Queens, and the Firebirds leading Queens by 13 with about a minute left to go in the third. Game's actually important, by the way, because for both of those teams, tied in the loss column at 11, that's for the last spot in the playoffs. Winner of that game certainly has the advantage going into the final day of the regular season. Adams misses the second free throw. We got a lane violation against Bridgeport, so Adams will get another opportunity at the free throw line. Second free throw, good on net. So 52 to 26, Spartans lead the Purple Knights. Henderson unable to get anything quite going offensively. Inside, Davis is fouled as, uh, as uh, Melissa Sadler came on the weak side, caught over the top. And the Purple Knights need to string together a couple of scores and stops here late on to try to give himself any chance here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, when you're trailing about 26, you just want to make it uh, as respectable as possible. Obviously, you still have uh, time, so uh, by definition, it is a chance, but you, you just want to, to your, to your point, just make it as competitive as possible. Yeah, the crazy thing is, when you look at the schedule, Isaiah, Purple Knights have a chance still to get that sixth spot in the league tournament because you got Queens, UDC, and the Purple Knights all at 11 losses, all tied for that last spot. And Queens will actually be locked in after today. So actually, Bridgeport's pretty happy that UDC is leading right now, knowing that there's still a chance. Great backdoor cut and find from Emily Preston to Ruth Adams. Adams able to get another basket. Now up to 21 points as Alizé Davis tries to negate that very quickly and get to the free throw line. But what backdoor movement there from Ruth Adams. And that's where you see the, the chemistry truly budding at the right time is you can trust your teammates to make the right decision and know that if I make this pass, they'll be there. And Davis getting herself to the free throw line a couple times here at the final few seconds of the third quarter. Confident for her to see the ball go in through these times. Second like free throw no good as we approach a minute remaining. Here at Harvey Hubble Gym, Bruce Webster Court. Marzella Rosemont broke his partner, J.J. Duke. And we got a travel as Carisco probably was better shooter sure taking that shot there. She heads to the bench as Zaria Thomas comes in. Thomas in double digits with 11. Wouldn't be a bad idea again to see Bridgeport look to attack. Next foul for Stack means that they're going to be over the limit. Holloman at the top of the key trying to get it to Henderson. 10 on the shot clock, looking for Knox, and we got a turnover. Oh, that's great heads up there by Stack. Seeing Bridgeport slow to get back in defense. You don't have to wait. 
once the whistle goes, you can go. And, and that is a byproduct of Henderson actually trying to explain the turnover to uh, Coach Mitchell. And while she was caught sleeping, Thomas got an easy breakout layup there. Dribble handoff to Loney. Ten seconds left in the corner, and you got a potential jump ball there, but as, as Knox tried to rip it away from uh, Thomas there. It's great work by Huertas tying it up, not making life easy for Knox in that situation. We've talked about it before, Isaiah. If you're you know, a forward or a center, you got to hold that ball above shoulder height. That time, Knox left it low and allowed Huertas a chance to tie it up. Knox able to get it to Davis, two on, a, two on the shot clock, unable to get the shot off at the buzzer, and that's indicative of where the Purple Knights are right now. Uh, 56 to 29 as we go into the fourth quarter. No, I think the, actually they might, I thought they might have put time back on the clock. There's .7 second differential. I think they're just gonna let this one go. So we go into the fourth. 56 to 29 on Isaiah Rodman broadcast partner JJ Duke. Stay tuned for the final 10 minutes. This is ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball. So, uh, despite the initial thinking that uh, they will go into the fourth, they're going to put .7 back on the clock to finish the third quarter. Stack will be inbounding. And as uh, Ruth Adams tried to initially uh, catch that inbound, five-tenths of a second went off the clock, so we're now at .2. And that is the official end of the third quarter. We'll be back for the final installment of 10 minutes here at Harvey Hubble Gym. Bruce Webb's the court. Welcome back to this ECC Network presentation of University of Bridgeport Basketball. As we head into the 4:56-29, the Spartans lead the Purple Knights. And with a dominant performance from Ruth Adams, she is now 14 points away from 1,000 in her career. Uh, she's been able to perform all the way around tonight, not only from the outside, but really just dominate on the inside. She had a double-double at the half. JJ, and just to see her game blossom in the fashion that it has to be in this position, uh, despite being up by so much, this opportunity, you know, is, is, is something that you relish. Yeah, and I mean, right now, you got to just continue playing the game as if you know, simulating like it's a tournament game. Is that jumper is going to go in? That's Georgia Smith with the basket. But yeah, that's why Stack has the pedigree and the quality that they have because they treat every game like it's the most important game of the season. And you have to at this stage. If you take your foot off the pedal for one game, that domino affects. Stack are not set right now in terms of the regional rankings either because they're at seven, but you never know what's going to happen elsewhere. So the only thing that they could do is focus on the here and the now and walk away nine minutes and 15 seconds later with the victory. They're working around this zone from Bridgeport. Emily Preston, able to get it to Thomas. Right wing three, no good. Preston chases down 
an offensive rebound, and Serbag resets. Adams with the basketball, not forcing anything, goes to Preston, but we got a foul. It'll be based on out of the bounds. That personal foul will go against Vienna Knox. I love Knox's aggression down low. She wants to fight for every position that they can, that she can. I think the one thing that she'll have to work a lot on uh, during the, during the off season is kind of controlling that aggression, if you will, knowing that there are going to be times to reach and try to poke the ball away. And then there's sometimes just to keep your position and make sure you front uh, the post. As Thomas misses that three-pointer, Bridgeport had an opportunity to set up offensively, but Knox called for the travel on the left wing. So another turnover for Bridgeport. Bridgeport came into that quarter, giving up uh, 16 points off turnovers. And that's created much of the separation here along with the three-point shot. And as I say that on cue, you get an opportunity from Serbak, but she's unable to knock down the three. Even though that was an open look, I think there might have been a better look if Stack used more shot clock. And I know that Kim Lusk is going to dial up certain possessions in film come tomorrow and explain, hey, you know what? Get it that you might have wanted it, but let's stick to our guns and our usual system. Trying to go to McBride in the post. It's a turnover. Sherback slows down, gets to the top of the key. Guarded by Kerr. Preston back to Sherback. Preston, guarded by Knox. 12 on the shot clock. They're working around to Adams. Adams guarded by McBride, driving baseline. Get in, gets a pass inside. What a pass set up for Georgia Smith and from that, Ruth Adams. And that's against something that Adams, we've seen grow throughout her game. We know she's a solid big, albeit a little slightly undersized, but still a very good big because she can't expand her game. But the floor presence to find that pass, that was huge. Yeah, she was never really hurried there. She didn't panic as she worked the baseline. She was able to find Smith cutting down the lane. And she got an easy basket. We approach seven minutes remaining. Spartans lead by 31, and we have a foul under the basket. That per personal foul again against Knox. And that is her second foul, and second already of the quarter for Bridgeport. Preston trying to go to Adams, and instead goes back to Serbak. Serbak jab step going against the zone from Bridgeport. Under 10 on the shot clock, Preston, jumper, good. Good step into it right there as Janie Mitchell needs to take a timeout. It's going to be a 30-second timeout. That's again, I mentioned a couple of possessions ago about Knox holding the ball down low when she receives. You saw on that from Preston. Everything stayed high, stays above the shoulders, and that's difficult to go and guard, especially if you have a little bit of an advantage and, most of the time, Preston will at six foot two inches. See, but you want to give yourself options. You keep it high, especially in that triple threat. Yep. You can pass or you can shoot. And considering the spacing that we've seen from, that we've seen established from the Spartans, those lanes are always there. And you saw she was able to get a good mid-range shot with solid spacing. So Bridgeport now with 6.52 left here in the game trailing. 62 to 29. Um, this is an opportunity, especially uh, for players that that really get a lot of a playing time. We see Vienna Knox really uh, being utilized here in this game. We can, we can potentially see other players being used as well. Davis gets it to Kerr. We approach 10 on the shot clock. She drives baseline, able to pass it off to Ashley Arroyo. Arroyo getting her first action in the game. McBride has to get a shot off at 2 on the clock, unable to do so. We got a jump ball, but it'll be a violation. Oh, they're going to give the jump ball to Bridgeport, but then would they reset? No, nah, they're going to reset one on the shot clock. That's almost, it's funny because you'd almost rather stack get your hands off the ball because you're going to get a shot clock violation there anyways. Now Bridgeport can generate something to the basket here and see if he can you know, maybe get a tip-in drill or draw contact. Never know. 
And again, that's uh, that's uh, no, they they called that shot was off was in in time, and then Smith walked with the ball. To be quite honest with you, that's not true. But that was yeah, that was very late. I mean, I mean, it's it was super late because Davis actually dribbled the basketball. She was able to get the shot off. And in anticipation to your point of the violation, the, the wall came and now possession will go to Bridgeport and Knox will go to the free throw line. Yeah, and that's the thing. You got to be opportunistic if you're Bridgeport in this situation. You had a call that certainly benefited you. Yeah. And now all of a sudden you have a chance to get points. And that's going to come into play on Saturday because, like I said, that game will certainly determine a lot. Mm -hmm. Because the Purple Knights still can't be eliminated if UDC hold on in that game. And they're currently up by 19, so I don't think that's going to change. You have to take advantage of those moments. Right. That's a winner. That's a winner. Go home opportunity there. And, and to have that opportunity on your home floor, that's all you can ask for, uh, considering the season that you've had to still be able to salvage something and play for something says a lot. And you want to you know, put yourself in the best position possible. Skip pass, driving baseline is Huerta. She's able to get it to Preston. Preston can't get the floater inside, but Ruth Adams is there to corral it and reset at the top of the key for Sherback. Sherback gets it to Huerta. Three-point shot, left corner, no good. Rebounded by Davis. Davis trying to push. She slowed down just a bit. And this is that part of the game for Bridgeport where you just want to start counting together how many good offensive sets do you run there's one right there. Jody Valdavar able to score inside, going across the lane, finishing with her left hand, getting great post position. That's one thing you always want to see, especially from a big, when, you, when you're running down the lane, establish yourself early. Jump shot for Preston, no good. Fighting for that rebound is Davis, and Davis able to draw a foul. That yep. personal foul will go against... Uh, the Spartans, number 15, uh, Melissa Alafania. Yeah, you all of a sudden starting to see the urgency pick up here for Bridgeport in these last few possessions. Certainly, again, for Bridgeport, you want that to start right from the opening jump as opposed to midway through the fourth quarter. Again, it's looking about trying to take some of the positives from this game. Preston. Comes away with a strong rebound, gets it to a weather. Under five minutes to play. Game in hand, 62 to 32. Spartan leads the Purple Knights. But to JJ's point, you just want to get consistency down the stretch as best you can. And Ruth Adams, who's been consistent all night, should be going to the free throw line for two. Personal foul called against Vols Delaval. And we're told, by the way, that Adams right now sitting 14 points away from 1,000 in her career. Unless she goes off in a huge scoring spurt in the final last 430. That'll probably be coming on the weekend, but certainly a well-deserved milestone when she hits it. She's a quality player that has served the stack program over the last three-plus seasons. Second free throw bounces in. Uh, Adams tonight with 23 points, uh, almost 10 points over her average. She's just been in a, in a flow all night. She's been able to get everything she's wanted, uh, especially from the outside. You mentioned just in terms of her volume. It's not the highest, but when she shoots it, she's very efficient, shooting 48% coming into tonight. And um, she's just been able to really establish herself. And it also ties her season high as well as Valstel Vaya gets that to go. Adams had 23 points in 23 minutes at pace earlier on this season. That win is actually a reason why that stack is still inside the top eight in the regional rankings because of that massive tiebreaker. And we got a blocking foul against Alizé Davis trying to attack. So Davis will go to the free throw line. That will go against Adams. She picks up her uh, she picks up her second personal foul. Yeah, I think they actually called that on the floor, but 
I'm also with the reaction of Kim Lusk. Uh, Alizé Davis kind of bowled in the shoulder there. I think that might have been going for player control, but again, opportunistic. That's what Bridgeport's trying to be here in the last 353. The last time that happened, uh, a potential shot clock violation wasn't called. Bridgeport was able to get to the free throw line and get some, some points out of that. So, you know, you want to, like you said, just seize every opportunity. Davis attacking, takes contact, and she'll be going to the free throw line. So there you go. And Davis is a pretty solid free throw shooter, all things considered. So chance to continue having more good possessions in this quarter than not. I know it's kind of a broken record that we're speaking upon here, but again, when we're talking about the way that this game has unfolded, St. Thomas Aquinas, they came in as a major favorite. They're looking to make sure that they secure the number two spot at minimum, secure a buy into the semifinals. They're going to do that, but it's about Bridgeport finishing game as the way that you want it to be. Second free throw for Davis, no good. Davis now in double digits with 10. The right touch guarded by Kerr. Preston, what a pass inside to Adams. Adams turnaround jumper, good off the glass. So there's a new season high there for Ruth Adams with 25 points. But that big-to-big -big passing from a high-low perspective, especially on the interior, is very tough. Adams was able to make a quick, assertive move off the glass. Davis unable to get the jump of the fall. Tough rebound there from Judith Vall, Delaval, and that's a lucky shot off the glass, but good to see her able to get that to fall. Lucky, but it was a hard work shot. I mean, she had to deal with two bodies on her to get that rebound, and sometimes, you know what, you gotta generate a little luck, and she hit it perfectly off the square. So it usually goes in. Better to be lucky than good. Adams, floater inside, just short, gets her own miss. Fighting for the rebound, and will be, it'll go to the Spartans. I think it, on that particular shot for Adams, she probably didn't realize how open she actually was. Shot it a bit short. We're just starting to see the Spartans empty their bench a little bit. Coming into the game will be jo Georgia Smith and uh, Steph Stefania Georgiou. No, actually, uh, Coach yeah, Lux she, sent she them to her the back. back. And now she's going to be coming in after these free throws, and Adams a chance to add to her new season high. Davis picks up that that foul. That's her fourth personal foul. And Adams knocks it down. So with 2.35 remaining, we want to get you prepared for the second half of this doubleheader in which JJ will be calling play-by-play -play. on the men's side. The University of Bridgeport, who ranks number one in, in regional rankings, they'll be going up against Stack, who is two in the rankings. That's, this is a prime time game for both teams as we prepare for postseason play. JJ, what are you expecting? <laughs> well, I would go with the obvious Mr. T reference of pain. <laughs> but, I mean, this is going to be a game that I think both of these teams want at this time of the year. You want to face competition that's going to emulate what you're going to see in the next few weeks. Bridgeport and St. Thomas Aquinas are going to face off at least once more after tonight. However, this game says a lot. It pretty much could, I don't want to say settle who's going to be the number one team in the region, but it's going to go a long way to do that. And the Purple Knights, they faced a setback on the weekend. Now, to be fair, I saw Malloy play yesterday away to New Haven, and we didn't see Nick Corbett here often in that game in the earlier fixture because he got sick about 10 minutes in or so. Corbett is lighting it up from everywhere on the floor. That's great work by Volstel Valle to keep the possession alive. But yeah, I expect Bridgeport to come out firing stack, knowing that they nearly had the win at home if it wasn't for Bakary Kamara tipping at the buzzer. They're gonna want retribution and they need a good quality road win too because remember Damon held on of the Lumsden Gymnasium just a couple of weeks ago. Hey, to your point, man, they're gonna want to 
compete at a high level on both sides for Bridgeport. Coming into that loss, they were they were on a hot streak. Sometimes it's better to lose now than later. So for them, obviously, the, for Malloy to jump out to such a such a big lead early, they had to fight back and get back into that game. But uh, in speaking with uh, assistant head coach um, Kranti Sanadi, to hear him from a coaching perspective, utilize that as a teaching moment. You know, sometimes you build such a, a winning streak, you, you lose some of your habits because you're so used to winning. So to have that happen to them, it kind of humbles them a bit, but it puts them in position to, you know, get back focus and try to make a playoff push. As we're under two minutes to play, 126 remaining. By Spartans. the way, that other game just wrapped up. UDC 69, Queens 46. And just doing the quick math, Bridgeport, if they win against Mercy on Saturday, that will force a four-way or three-way tie at four and twelve. That is also assuming as well if UDC loses their final game and they're going to be taking on this stack team up in Spark Hill. Bridgeport would have the mini conference tiebreaker, winning three of the four games between Queens and UDC. Let's get a shot clock violation. So right now, Bridgeport, I mean, they don't know it yet, but they're going to know very soon that Saturday's game will be the end-all, be-all. They can get that sixth seed and play into next week, which was crazy to think about you know, probably a couple hours ago, but here we are. Hey, man, you got to take every opportunity you can get. And for, for them, I think a lot of times the circumstances build uh, the, the sense of urgency. To, it brings the best out of you in certain situations. So you want to utilize that as best you can. We get a substitution timeout with 42.7 left in the game. Just a, a, a really well-executed game for the Spartans. If you're Coach Lusk, you... You are happy with how you perform, especially against, uh, you, you mentioned being a heavy favorite, uh, Bridgeport being the lesser opponent. You still don't want to play down to your competition. You want to establish your standard and play to it consistently. I think they did that tonight. And to your point about Bridgeport, um, even even though they, they didn't get the result they wanted, when they find out that they have that opportunity on Saturday, I think they'll go all out, especially being, on, being at home. Don't have a choice. The question is, the over-under on how many times you will use last game of the season, Brent can't hold anything back. I'm setting it at three. The, the, the funny thing about that is between now and Saturday, I'll probably forget that and unconsciously use it probably ten. That's fine. <laughs> no one said which side I'm taking, the over or the under. Bellavar unable to get it to fall. She can't get the reverse on the reload to fall, and that'll still about do it. We have four seconds left, and the Spartans will improve to 20 and 6, 12 and 4 in ECC play. 71 to 42, they defeat the Purple Knights. A big time performance from Ruth Adams, who is about eight points away from 1,000. She's been able to, to dominate tonight, 27 points for her, uh, established and set a tone. Outside of that, the Spartans were able to knock down key three-point shots throughout to keep uh, Bridgeport at arm's length. And to your point, JJ, despite being very efficient in terms of turnovers in the first half, Bridgeport went through a stretch where they weren't able to maintain possessions, and the Spartans were able to get out and build on that, and that's why you see a 29-point uh, win for the Spartans. But we have... A 30-minute intermission between this first half of the doubleheader to the second half where J.J. will call the men's side of the Purple Knights versus the Spartans. I'll be back calling color. Stay tuned. 